Before we get into this awesome video, I wanted to show you guys my newest favorite thing. In case you haven't heard, this is huge news. Nama, we all love our Nama J2 juicer, right? They just came out with the Nama C2 cold pressed juicer and blender in one. You guys, this is amazing. This blender compares to the top blenders in the marketplace and we can make our beautiful juices, smoothies, sauces, dips. You can make nut milks, sorbet, ice cream, nut butters, everything in this. It is amazing, 10 out of 10. So I wanted to share it with you guys in case you didn't know, it is awesome. And if you guys wanna save 10% on one, you can, I'll put my code down below. And I love you guys, enjoy this video. Right. So mm -hmm. I find it fascinating. What a story. You were diagnosed, I think, with prostate cancer in your 40s and you had no symptoms, right? 48. I was 48. I had no symptoms. And it was kind of a fluke in a way that I found out because I got gotten a new doctor. And you know, when you go to a new doctor, they ask you about family history. And I mistakenly told her that my dad had had prostate cancer because she had asked me about history of cancer. And I could have sworn my dad told me he had prostate cancer, but he didn't. He had, he lived in California at the time and I lived in Atlanta. And I remember a conversation, I just thought he said he had prostate cancer, but he had actually had an enlarged prostate. But thank God I did that because it prompted my doctor to do a PSA test on me. And I didn't even know she was doing it, didn't know what that was. And that's when she discovered you know, that my PSA levels were elevated. And I didn't know what that meant either. And turns out, you know, I had prostate cancer. And what happened for me, and I think it happens for so many people, none of the doctors, not my primary physician, not the urologist or oncologist, talked to me about anything about lifestyle. They were just rushing me to have surgery, you know? Yeah. And at the time, I didn't know any better. So I just listened to what they said and I did what they, what they said. And I had every type of complication you can imagine with the surgery that I had. Uh, I had incontinence, I had erectile dysfunction and I was in excruciating pain for well over a year. And it was during that time when I was going through that journey, I met an herbalist who began to ask me the questions that needed to be asked. Like, what are you eating? What's going on with your stress level? And what I found out was there was direct correlation between all the stuff that I had grown up eating and prostate cancer. Nobody oh, told me this. Yeah. Dairy and meat have a direct correlation to prostate cancer. And nobody had that conversation. None of the medical professionals had that conversation with me. And I just knew that based upon what I was discovering on my own research, that I knew that there was a natural way for my body to heal, not only from the cancer, because they didn't know if the surgery was gonna work, that they're treating it. They don't know if you know it would work, but I wanted to make sure that I was being proactive and educating myself on how I could help my body naturally heal. So that's kind of where it started for me. And who knew it could be such an invasive surgery? You think you're doing the right thing. You know, you think, okay, it's your decision if you want to opt out of like chemo and radiation, but you think for sure, right. like you can't go wrong with the surgery, right? Right, right. Yeah. And, and all of the side effects, because what happens is they put like 126 um, radioactive seeds into my prostate and it was emitting radiation and it caused scar, uh, scar tissue and it caused all kinds of adverse effects. And again, the only thing my doctors were saying, well, we can give you a pill for that. We can give you a pill for the- It's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but all of those pills that they were suggesting had all these ridiculous side effects. And I'm just like, I'm not willing to go down that road. And so for about a year, I really suffered like I would be in so much pain that I would go into the bathroom and put towels under so my son wouldn't hear me screaming because it, I was just in that much pain. But I just didn't want to go down the route of just taking pills to mask no. all of these um, symptoms I was having. And, um, I, and for me, I was so really disappointed because the same year I got diagnosed with cancer, two of my friends had died, uh, died of cancer. One of my friends, he, his cancer had gone into remission and he had, he was like, they thought he was not going to make it much longer. So he was in hospice and miraculously it went into remission again. 
And I remember asking him, well, are you doing anything differently? And he said, no, because nobody ever talked to him about making changes. And then the cancer came back. And this time when it came back, he didn't make it. And I just feel that it's so unfortunate that our medical professionals are not having those conversations about things that we can do. Okay, you, you got the cancer. Even if you go the traditional route, yeah. there are things yeah. you can do to help create a healing environment in your body so that your body can fight off you know, any kind of disease. Absolutely. And do you think maybe if this obstacle, if this didn't happen, you would have never taken this path though, maybe, right? Do you think it's maybe been one of the biggest blessings of your life, even though at the time it probably seemed horrible, obviously? I always tell people cancer for me was really a blessing in disguise because had it not been for cancer, I would have continued to eat all of the things that were causing mucus and inflammation in my body because I grew up loving meat, cheese, and dairy. I mean, I could eat cheese just all day by itself with nothing, you know, <laughs> nothing would, I would just, I would put cheese in the microwave and just eat it by itself. I was addicted to it, and pints of ice cream, all of those things. And um, I know that I would have continued down that route. And now I know at 56, I'm not on any kind of medication. I don't have high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis. I don't have any of the disease. Some of my friends who still eat that way are dealing with, and I know it's a direct correlation with my, the way I eat. Yeah. And you clearly feel better. Do you feel better mentally? Cause you're so happy. Were you always this way or did like the, did like the more raw foods and the juicing, this lifestyle bring this out in you? Oh my God, Jillian, the first time I did a juice cleanse, my goal was to do, um, first I said tw seven days, then it turned into 21 and I ended up going 65 days. And the reason why is because I had never felt so incredible, amazing. I had such clarity. I had all this creativity that was just spewing up. And I was like, wait a minute. This is how we should always, you know, be feeling. I, and I think sometimes we don't, I never knew what it felt to feel good and to have this kind of energy, you know, I, until I changed my diet. Me too. Me too. And juicing, it really, it takes you to the next level. Was it, so was it hard to stay on track with that? Like what kind of benefits did you notice? And do you have any tips for somebody who might want to try that out? I just did nine days and even I had to stop because I was going to Chicago to interview okay, Karen, yeah. Karen Calabrese. And I was like, I got to try her raw food. I want to try Chicago yeah, yeah. raw, all these right, places. Right. But I had to force myself to stop. Like I wanted to keep going. I was on day nine. I hadn't done one in about a year. Usually I do like one to two juice fast a year. I, it's hard to explain unless you've experienced it. Right. But I never it feel really better is. in my life than juice cleansing. And it's great. Cause you still have so much energy because you're taking in so yeah. many calories. So like, what are your keys to a successful juice cleanse? And like, how many juices do you drink a day and stuff? You know, for me, Jillian, I think it was a little easier because I had a why and my why was just wanting to remain healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and also I don't have televisions in my house, so I don't see the news. And I think for some people, you see all these commercials and you're kind of triggered. If you see, you know, nachos or burgers, that can be very triggering. And so I don't, I don't watch TV, so I didn't have, have those triggers. But one of the things that I did was I always made sure anytime I felt a little hungry or felt like, thought I was going to be, I would drink more juice. And that helped me to stay, you know, Help me not to, because I didn't want to stay full. I didn't want to feel full. You don't feel full on when you're juiced. You know, you feel, yeah. you feel satisfied, but you don't feel full. But those were some of the things that, that, that helped me. And like you, at around 65 days, I didn't want to stop, but I ended up stopping because I was in the process of moving and I had to stay at a hotel and it was just hard juicing, you know, at a hotel, but it was, it was hard to stop. And then it was kind of, kind of scary for me to stop because I'm like, okay, now what am I going to do when I stop? And I know me, I'm an overeater by nature. I'm not the kind of person that can just have a piece of something and be satisfied. I tend to just, so I was kind of worried about how would I transition? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But did you, like, I know a lot of people think like, don't juice cleanse because it's so extreme. And then you're going to binge. Like, how did you keep that in control? And like any tips for people in general, not to overeat? Because I think even if we're not on a juice fast, sometimes like emotions can get the best of us and we want to just. Right, right. And so for me, you know, making sure that I'm incorporating juice into my daily, you know, protocol. Mm -hmm. So for me, starting off with the green juice is so important because sometimes our body's not craving food, it's craving nutrients. So having a green juice helps to kind of, for me, stave off that that tendency of overeating. And so juicing, you know, I probably juice probably 50 to 60% of what I consume in a day. So it's a big part of my regular, regular, regular diet. Yeah, same here. It's so life changing. And what's your favorite juice? I'll have to ask because you're so like juicing man, I feel like. Oh God, I love green juices, but I love grape juice with a little ginger and, you know, watermelon season over, but I love watermelon juice. I mean, I, I love them all. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. And okay. So when you experienced your healing, so you had the surgery and then I had the surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had the problems for about a year. Mm-hmm. So then you realized like you started incorporating, I think black seed oil, right. And juices and raw mm-hmm. foods. And then that, that like just helped things in a major way. Yeah, but it, it took it took some time. It didn't happen overnight. For me, it was probably, and I don't even remember when I woke up and didn't have to wear depends because there was a period where I had to actually wear depends. And that was for me the most almost the most humiliating experience to go to the grocery store and have to buy depends. It it took me a few days for me to get up the courage because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God, how is this my life? Mm -hmm. Um, so my healing didn't happen overnight and I think I wanted it to. And I think so often when we are on a healing journey, you know, we want it to happen overnight, but for me, it probably took well over a year of me making, uh, the changes that I was making and incorporating, you know, um, all of the healthy things that I were replacing with, you know, the cheese and all that other stuff with before I started to see you know, any noticeable changes. Mm -hmm. And um, the first thing that, you know, that I was just happy about was just not having to wear the pins. I'm like, not having the incontinence was just, just a relief, you know, and then everything else, you know, went back to normal. And then the pain subsided. But yeah, it was like an over a year process uh, for me. Wow. See, so yeah. people, some people need to realize it takes time, right? Like I had a lot of health problems at one point and then that's what mm-hmm. led me to trying raw and they right. reversed like very quickly. But then you hear some people mm-hmm. where they don't. And it's like Karen was telling me, she's like, well, we mm-hmm. eat a certain way our whole life. Whole we can't life, expect yeah. to just like get fixed overnight or that there's not going to be problems come back. Right. 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 I was eating dairy and all kinds of meat for over 40 Mm -hmm. eight years. Mm -hmm. So to think that, you know, in a week or two that I'm just going to, you know, be feeling normal after having such an invasive procedure and going through that whole cancer experience to think that my body is just going to just, you know, go back to normal, uh, you know, it it was a little optimistic, but for me, I, I kept going, even though I wasn't initially seeing, you know, any signs of healing, like, cause I was still dealing with, you know, the erectile dysfunction, the pain, the incontinence, but I kept going because I kept looking at other people's stories and I would watch your program and other people's programs that would give me hope that, okay, healing is possible. You know, change is possible. Healing is possible. And, and then it happened. I always say, you know, healing sometimes is a slow journey and then suddenly it happens, you know, and we don't yeah. know the day or the hour it's going to happen, but you just keep going. And, and it, one of the things that kept me going was I, I started just to have more energy, even during the pain and even during the incontinence. I started just to feel better. And I'm like, this is different, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> this is different. Yeah. So. And the people around you, they were supportive. No. No. Did you <laughs> no. change? Like, did your circle change? Uh, yes. And and here's the thing. Like, we we socialize, we are intimate all over food. And, mm-hmm. you know, growing up the way I did, you know, the food, the types of food that we ate were a big part. Like, 
I remember when I was first starting uh, on my journey, it was Thanksgiving time and going to my godmother's house, you know, they had nothing that I could eat and they were all, you know, they were a little offended. People get offended if you're not eating their, eating their food. And, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's been initially, you know, people did, folks were like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You know? Yeah. And I think the food industry does such a great job of confusing people about health and well-being. It does. Uh, that people look at you oddly when you're doing something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say like you feel better now than you did when you were like in your twenties? Absolutely. I'm 56. I don't ever, I know at 26, 36, I always had, I would eat all these things. Like every time I would eat cheese and I eat cheese every day, I would always feel like I had a cold. I had these, yeah. but I ate, I ate the stuff anyway. And you know, my mood, I was very moody. I mean, it's amazing the impact that food has on our mood. And, um, it is. um and so, yes, I, 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 I've never felt this good. Yeah. And whatever you're eating, like it's working because your mood is always like on. So, like, <laughs> what do you currently eat in a day? Like why, what, what are your secrets? So I eat high raw. Mostly I do a lot of juicing, uh, a lot of salads. I make my, you know, my own dressings. I eat a chickpeas if I want something a little more filling, but people often ask me, but do you crave like other stuff? other stuff and for me I love the way I feel more so than anything Taste. that Taste. I've ever tasted in the past you know it just it just doesn't compare me too it I always say compare. like I eat good to feel good that's why I eat this way absolutely it's yeah like night and day difference and I know like our thoughts and being negative like has a big part in our health too and I think I've heard you talk mm -hmm. on it before but I know like constant negative thinking and then how we think affects how, our, how we feel and our vibration and that can yes. stress, which can, I think, I mean, we don't have proof of it, but I think lead to health problems as well. So what do you, do you think that ever came into play with your health problems and how have you navigated like dealing with stress and remaining positive and like, you know, not giving into those thoughts, like keeping your thoughts mm -hmm. and your body positive? Yeah. You know, when they say stress is a killer, it really is. But I think for me, I had been so used to being stressed that I didn't even recognize it as stress. It was my norm. You know, I grew up in the hood. I My dad was abusive to my mom. I experienced all that trauma. We never talked about it. It was never addressed. And so I just kind of stuffed all that pain away. And as I got older, I was just used to being and feeling stressful. I remember when I was in college, I used to have panic attacks, didn't talk about it. And I remember when I was going through the whole cancer experience, I had to find ways to encourage myself because sometimes I wanted to give up. Sometimes I didn't, you know, when I was going through cancer, there were times I didn't want to wake up. The pain was that intense. And one of the things that I used to do is I would put little yellow stickums in my uh, bathroom window to, mm -hmm. I would say, I'm enough. I'll get through this. This too shall pass. Ways to encourage myself as well as to reprogram my mind because it's easy to think of because the way our society is set up is easy to, to default to the negative, you know? It's easier. So you have to, yeah. It's easier, yeah. So you really have to be intentional for me in terms of encouraging myself and reminding myself that, you know, that I was going to get through this and, and making sure that I do things on a daily basis. Like as soon as I get up and make my bed, I'm writing in my gratitude journal because that helps to focus me and center me. And then I'm reading something inspirational, whether it's Louise Hayes or somebody, you know, to help kind of center my day because life is going to life. Things are going to happen that are out of our control. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not centered, I can react rather than respond to the craziness that is everybody's life. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. Okay. So you, so that's what, that's great. Starting the day with gratitude. I think just how we start our day and how we end our day is so important for yeah. conscious and then how our life, the life we create. So what else does your current daily routine look like? Like as someone mm -hmm. who's so happy and healthy, like you do your gratitude and then take us through a day in your life. And if then, I'm not, you know, if I'm not asking too much information, no, 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 <laughs> yeah. not at all. 
And so one of the things that is really important for, for me, just in terms of keeping my weight stable, because as a kid, I was always a heavy kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, sometimes as we get older, people send, tend to think that their metabolism is slowing down. I think what happens is activity tends to slow down. So for me, I work out every at least six to seven days a week, sometimes seven. And I do a lot of resistance training because as I've gotten older, cardio wasn't working uh, mm -hmm. for me. And just in terms of, you know, your joints as you get older, the resistance training has been much more effective for me. So every day I'm in the gym and that's my, you know, my go-to place where I can just kind of help to reduce the, my stress levels. Me too. It helps so much. It's like, and I yeah. see so many people transform their entire lives, like literally just starting with like a committed gym routine and then right. like their lives transform in all sorts of other ways too. Cause it has such an impact on us, like outside of the gym, what we do in the gym, that workout. Right. And I always say, you know, we have to give ourselves to ourselves before we give ourselves away. Too often, we are always trying to, you know, help everyone else. and We're not filling our own cup. And I know that was for me the majority of my life. And then being a single parent, you know, since my son was one, I was always just, you know, making sure he was OK, making sure my parents were OK. And I wasn't taking care of me. And what I found is that when we take care of ourselves. We are better able to help those who we love. Mm -hmm. So true. And while you're a single parent, I didn't realize that. And yeah. I know a lot of people think like this lifestyle, you're in the kitchen all the time. It's so much work. Like I can't make it work. And so being a single parent, being someone who's so successful and, you know, creates so much content, does so much. Any tips for like how you make this work as somebody who's busy, right? With a busy lifestyle, because people think it's not possible. They think I can do yeah. it. It's just too much work, but I think it's less work than cooking, but that's just me. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And for me, it's, it's a lot for me, I think it's about getting into a groove and getting into it. I think mm -hmm. the thought of it is often more daunting than the reality of it. I think sometimes we talk ourselves off just because we've never done it. I said, and then I always encourage people just to start small. Like even if you're just starting your health journey, just start juicing uh, the juice in the morning, have your green juice. And I think as you start to see how you feel and the changes, you'll be more prone to, okay, well, how can I get more of this? And, you know, and figuring out what works for you because um, I don't find it to be, you know, difficult. It's just, it's my life. Yeah. Then you start to feel good. Then that's your motivation, right? That's my yeah. motivation. So making the juices and like getting extra produce, maybe like an extra mm -hmm. day of the week or something. It doesn't feel right. like a pain. Cause I just feel so right. good that like, that's the main driver. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, amazing. Yeah. Your journey is so amazing. And do you do coaching? Because I was just thinking like, you'd be such a great coach. Do you coach or no? No, I don't. No. So I, I, I have a business. Yeah. I own my own supplement company. So, you know. Cool. Uh, I didn't know that. Tell us about that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I started my business right before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm a serial entrepreneur. You know, when I was in my late twenties, I owned a staffing agency in the Bay Area. And I, I've always just been an entrepreneur and then you know after cancer happened I was kind of lost for for a minute and trying to figure out what I could do to give service and to give back and one of the things I realized that a lot of people didn't know of all of the supplements that I um, was exposed to from my herbalist that helped me on my healing journey and so I built a company around that cool you know, it's called good living now so um, we offer all the supplements that I took on my journey that, again, a lot of people have not heard of. Like even the, even do you offer like the black seed oil and stuff? I don't know anything about <laughs> yeah, that. So we have, like, what are the benefits of that? It's, it helps to reduce inflammation in the body. Like a lot of my people who take it, they say it helps them with pain in, in their bodies. And, and the reason is because it's reducing the inflammation. So if they have arthritis or are dealing with gout, it helps them with that. Wow. Amazing. There's so many things. And do you feel like mm -hmm. there's any specific foods that like any special healing foods or like any specific foods that you think were really powerful in your journey and like healing or just like extra powerful, like raw foods or juices or anything in your life? Well, you know, ginger became a staple, parsley, mm -hmm. all these things. And so I didn't grow up eating fruits and vegetables, you know, mm -hmm. and just was it. And so 
all of these things for me, I find to be, you know, very, very healing. All types of green vegetables, beets. I didn't, I thought beets were something that you ate only at Thanksgiving that were cooked and with this other stuff. Me it. too. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I, now, now I love beets. I love red beets. I love golden beets because they have so many benefits. Like I always recommend people who, like guys, feel comfortable with, with talking to me about erectile dysfunction because I talk so openly about it. So they feel, and I'm like, go get you some beets. It helps with your nitric oxide. It helps with your blood flow. Get you some, that's going to help you, you know, with that. So. And I like um, how you're so transparent and open. That's what really people can relate, you know, and they feel like, you know, they can learn from it and they can relate and they can talk to you. And where do you think you would be right now if like this cancer path hadn't happened or like it had happened, but you didn't take this route or like, where do you think you'd be if you never started eating differently? I'd probably be somewhere depressed. Yeah. I probably would be somewhere depressed um, because what this journey has led me to a, a way of helping and uh, an ability to connect with other people, you know, and I never thought I'd be able to do that, um, particularly on social media being someone that's older, you know, I still, I remember, you know, when I first started my business, my marketing person was telling me, you need to get on social media. I'm like, and do what? What am I going to say? Nobody no, but you have so much to offer. Like you, man. No, but you're not old at all. And you <laughs> you have such a great personality. And I feel like you have a lot of wisdom and a lot of experience. That's the thing. Like, that's like me. I thought that too, even being 41, mm -hmm. only too old for YouTube. Like I thought that, <laughs> but then I'm like, you know what? I have so much more experience now that especially interviewing right, people right. and stuff than if I was 25, like I wouldn't be in right. I had no traumas, no, I hadn't gone right. through anything at 25. So like, it's like, right, right. it's not as relatable, right? We, these experiences right, right. They shape us and they change us yeah. and they're actually blessings. Like even the bad things, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And you know what, Jillian, what really happened for me on social media, my social media exploded about a year and a half ago. And what happened was um, Kourtney Kardashian shared one of my videos on her story. And I don't, I didn't follow her uh, at the time. And someone DM me and I, I knew my numbers kept growing. I mean, just like growing like crazy. I went from yeah. like maybe having a few thousand to like, about a hundred thousand followers within a very short period of time. And I was like, where are all these people coming from? What, what is going <laughs> on? And somebody DM me and said, did you know that Courtney had shared your, your um, post to her story? And I didn't, then I went and looked and I saw it and I was like, oh my God. And so that her just sharing that one video really kind of blew my social media presence up. I love that. Meant to be. What was it? Was yeah. it like a juicing recipe or something? No, it was so funny because it was a, a, a different type of video. I, I, I woke up one morning and said that I wanted to, I had to start to do a video about the fact that the United States has one of the highest cancer rates in the world. And the fact that many of the chemicals in our products are banned in other countries. And so mm -hmm. I, that's what the video was about. And I went and bought a little uh, globe and I was spinning the globe. I didn't know what I was doing. And that video went viral and somehow she saw it and shared it. And um, yeah. I love that. Meant to be, you know, meant to yeah. be. And you yeah. create such yeah. great content. Like you deserve oh. a lot of followers. And I'll link your Instagram and your YouTube channel below. And I'm wondering if like someone's watching us and they're going through a hard time, whether it's cancer or not even cancer, just like life, you know, traumas, depression, not feeling healthy. They want to feel this good. They want to be vibrant mm -hmm. like you, happy, living your purpose, loving your life. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for them? Like if people are out there feel like giving up or they're just mm -hmm. like, they don't know how to get started. Maybe they have a hard mm -hmm. time because these cravings just control their mind too, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, Julia, I always say that I know it doesn't feel like it, but change is possible. And healing is possible. And you're worth it. You're worth making the change. And you're worthy of living the life that you envision. But you got to be able to see it first. You got to be able to see yourself differently than your current state. You know, once you can get that vision, then you have something to, to look forward to and to move toward. But change is possible. Healing is possible. I'm a living testimony of that. Yeah, you I'm are. 
And you're right. Visualization. It's a huge, huge part. Don't you think? Cause we really are creators of our own life. I'm working on that lately and falling asleep with like affirmations and really visualizing like, you know, I'm doing this course with a manifesting expert too. And she's like, you need, we need to like ignore our five senses, you know, and like, mm-hmm. you know, create our life from our imagination. And it's true. Right. You know, I Absolutely. think too much we're looking around, you know, at our lives and maybe that is. we're not happy with. Yeah. And we right. need to like go within and create our life. And don't you feel like it's so much easier to be a creator of your life when you eat this way? Like, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. You think better. Way you better. You have more energy to try different things, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I always say, you know, everything we're putting on our mouth is either fighting disease or feeding it. And, you know, when we're fueling our bodies with healthy nutrients, it just opens up everything for us, I think. Mm-hmm. And do you take like, do you take the health to another level too, when it comes to like household cleaners or soaps or like deodorants or like things you use too, or toothpaste, or is it just, mm-hmm. yeah. So I don't wear deodorant and I don't stink. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. At least I so don't I, think I stink. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So one of the things that I use, I, I use lemon or lime as deodorant. Wow. Um, and, yeah. And, and, and I did a video of, on that a while ago and, and it went viral but it went viral because people were not believing it and then I was so happy <laughs> that people in the comments were saying no I do it and it works um so and I also make my own soaps because cool. you know the skin is our largest organ and so it's like I don't think that we give enough thought to what we're putting on our on our skin mm-hmm. so um yeah so I I only uh, put natural things in my body and on my body. Good. And you were, I know you'd mentioned weight before, but like, was it a pretty big transformation? You're like your weight, because I know people might wonder before you started eating this way and then eating this way, like, mm. was it a pretty drastic if we see pictures or no? No. Well, see, as a kid, I was heavy. Mm-hmm. Then as I got older, I was able to manage my weight by doing some of the things that we were, the media was telling us to do by restricting our carbs and eating all this process. So I was able to control my weight that way initially. Um, But I've been able to maintain my weight um, successfully, you know, on a, you know, a high raw diet. I don't even think, I don't count calories or do any of that stuff. You know, I I eat Mm -hmm. and drink, you know, best time for that. Yeah, (laughs) me too. And you need to listen to your body. I think it's just easy to like calculating all these things. Just like listen to your body, you know, well, it's definitely working for you. And again, sorry, how long have you been vegan for? I've been vegan for about five years yeah. I've been high raw for uh over two years. And do you supplement? I oh, do. Oh, yeah, supplement. you do, because you have a yeah. supplement company. Yeah. I think yeah. that's important yeah. too. Yeah, I forgot for a second. Yeah. No, I checked yeah. my blood work supplement. Well, this has been awesome. I've loved talking to you. I've loved having you on. I think your story is amazing. And like I said, like you're just such good vibes. I feel like when people are around you, even watching your content, it just uplifts our spirit. You know, I just feel better well, after watching you. a piece of your content or like better after talking to you. So it's a great oh, impact you. you're having as a human being. And if thank there's you. anything else you want to share with the audience about your journey or any advice or anything at all, then absolutely do so and let everybody know where they can find you. And I'll link everything below as well. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, for, for most of my life, Jillian, I never thought I was enough. And I think that when we have those feelings of not feeling like we're enough, we don't think that we can do the things that we really want to do. And I just want to encourage uh, people to know that you're worthy and you're enough just as you are. You don't have anything to defend to, or to prove. You're enough just as you are. I love that. You are, you need, are, do you do speaking? Like, do you do events with speaking? Because you're so good at it. No, I don't. <laughs> but thank you. Like, you know, really good at it. Wow. That was amazing. That was touching. Amazing. And you have an incredible YouTube channel, which I will link down below. I think it's called Good Living Now with Harold. Am I right? Uh Yeah. And then you are on Instagram under Harold Mm -hmm. LaFall. And Mm -hmm. I'll link your website, your company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it would be great to have you back one day. Maybe when I am out where you are, we can do some juicing videos. I'll bring my vlog. Oh, yeah. I would love that. That That would be be so much fun. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Anytime. And to the viewers, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you don't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.